We are here to wrestle. Easter is one of those interesting times when we as Unitarian Universalists and those who seem to gravitate to our churches on Jesus-related holidays get to tackle this homeless wandering prophet and attempt to make sense of who he was and what his life and death mean to us now. And this morning, this year, I'm especially impressed with Jesus as a wrestler, a wrestler of the spirit, as one who struggled, who took in the truths that he was given and asked question after question, as one who prayed hard and craft truth for himself. I mean, Jesus, as one who was not content to coast through his life, not content to toil peaceably under an oppressive rule, but rather one who saw with open eyes, who prayed with open soul, and asked over and again, is this just? Is this right? Is this true? And this, in fact, is one of the most Jewish things about Jesus. The word Israel can be translated as they who wrestle. And as long as there has been Judaism, there have been Jews wrestling with Scripture struggling with tradition. In one of the holy books, there's even the traditional text in the middle of the page surrounded by midrash or commentary. And this midrash is the sum total of generations of recorded wrestling, of so many people asking so many questions, recording their struggles, recording their strivings, and the greater, deeper truths to which they came. And so this Jesus we celebrate today was part of a long tradition of Jews who struggled and wrestled. And sometimes this struggle is just what we need. Now this is a hard thing to say, especially now, especially in these days, it is hard to say that hard times can shape us, that crisis and confusion, that calamity holds potential and promise but it is one of those inconvenient truths. One of those truths that can only partially help in the moment, because when we're knee deep in the muck of change and turmoil, when we are facing down the unimaginable, it can only partly help be helpful to remember that these times are especially when we grow. It's one of those truths that make us want to smack the truth teller. Because, of course, for good reason, most of us would rather coast than wrestle. A day stretched out with a good book, enjoying time with loved ones, laughing, playing with children is, of course, more enjoyable than sitting at the dinner table across from our beloved, trying to figure out how we are going to make it, trying to come up with money for rent, for taxes, trying to hold it together. Even if you're one of the few not directly affected by our current economic crisis, the anxiety in the air, the tension in which we have been living for months has taken its toll and holds potential. In a recent interview, educator and writer Parker Palmer drew parallels between this time of recession and his experience of depression. He said, I eventually understood that the depression that descended on me in my 40s could have been likened to a figure that had been following me for a long time in my life. At first it was several blocks away shouting my name, and I kind of dimly heard it. But I didn't want to hear what it had to say, so I simply walked on faster. It came closer, it approached me, I imagine this literally as a figure chasing me down the street. And what's it going to do? It's going to yell louder. It's going to come closer, make me want to avoid it all the more. It's going to get even closer. It's going to pick up a can and toss it at me to try and get my attention. And finally, if I refuse to turn around over and over, it'll drop a bomb, do anything to get your attention. It's going to do anything in its power to stop you in your tracks. And he went on to say that once the bomb dropped, he felt horrible, that he was stretched to the breaking. And it was then, in that moment, that one of his therapists said to him, you seem to imagine this depression 
as the hand of an enemy trying to crush you. Would it be possible to re-image your depression as the hand of a friend trying to press you down onto ground on which it is safe to stand? This idea settling into his being was the beginning of the transformation of his depression. Hard times come, and we can be crushed by them. We can be overwhelmed and sometimes need to feel overwhelmed, and sometimes in the midst of that feeling, we can have glimpses of clarity. We can see and feel and know things that we might have held at bay successfully for a long time. This crisis we are facing is crushing and it is anxious making and fear provoking. So many of us have lost our jobs or are facing reduced pay or uncertain futures. And even in the midst of that stress and confusion in these hard times, in this struggle, there is an opportunity to ask ourselves, what is most important? We can take honest account of the lives that we have been living and ask, are you truly happy? Do you have time for what matters most to you? Once we are on the other end of these hard times, once we are in the wake of this struggle, who do you want to be? As a nation, and as a community, and as individuals, we are at a crossroads. Here, in the midst of this struggle, there may be a new kind of living, a new way, waiting to begin. Anything is possible. Some of the best stories have surprise endings. A deeper, richer, truer living might await you. A story to close. In these trying times, may we struggle. May we wrestle well with all that we have and all that we love. And may we know that the struggle is forcing life into wings we cannot yet see that on the other end, we will be made new and take flight. Amen.